Hello everyone, my name is Su Yuan. I'm a postdoc at Applied Computing for Scientific Discovery Group. Today I'm going to talk about my recent work with my collaborators at LBL and UC Berkeley on quantum circuit resizing for resource optimization. The first question one might want to ask is why do we need resource optimization for quantum computing? The reason is that quantum computing is still at the early stage. The quantum hardware has several physical constraints. Here this figure shows the architecture of uh, IBM superconducting quantum chip. We can see for this chip it only has five qubits and also the connectivity can, be on, can only be realized between neighbor qubits. For example, we cannot connect Q1 with Q4 directly since there is no link. And these error bars shows the different errors of quantum operations like readout error, quantum gate error, etc. Due to these physical constraints, we need to optimize the resource to better utilize the quantum computer. So how to characterize the resource? Given a quantum algorithm, usually we first translate it into a quantum circuit, and then we run the circuit on the hardware. So here our focus is at the circuit level. Now I will explain how to characterize resource for a quantum circuit. Here is an example of a quantum circuit. Each line represents a qubit. We can see we have four qubits here, and these are the single qubit gates since it only includes one qubit. And these are the two qubit gates, also called C naught gate. It includes two qubits. And this, these dashed lines are just barriers to separate between the single qubit gate and two qubit gates. The circuit depth it is defined as the critical path of the circuit, which is 5 here, since we have 5 gates at the bottom qubit Q3. So the number of qubits, 1 qubit gates, and 2 qubit gates, and circuit depth are the common metrics to characterize the resource of a quantum circuit. In our work, we explore the technique of mid-circuit measurement and reset. It can enable some new circuit optimization opportunities. Let me explain what is mid-circuit measurement and reset. So for a quantum circuit, you already apply some gates and we measure at the end of the circuit. But here, for example, we have a one qubit circuit. First, we initialize the qubit to state zero, and then we apply a X gate, so it is changed to state one. Then we measure the qubit, reset it to state zero, and then we apply some other operations afterwards. This mid-circuit measurement and reset technique can enable circuit optimization by a technique called circuit resizing. Here's an example. We have a three qubit circuit, and each node here represents a qubit. First, we apply a two qubit gate between Q0 and Q2, as shown in this green circle. And then we apply another uh, C0 between Q1 and Q2, as shown in the purple circle here. This graph shows the dependencies of the gates, and we call it gate dependency graph. So uh, from the graph we can see for Q0, as shown in the green circle, the finish of Q0 only depends on Q0 and Q2. It is irrelevant to Q1. But as shown in the purple circle, the finish of Q1 and Q2 depend on all the qubits. So let's take a look at Q0, since it is independent to Q1. We can first apply a C0 gate between Q0 and Q2 as in the blue circle, uh, green circle, and then we measure it, reset it, and we reuse Q0 for Q1. In this way, we can resize the input three qubit circuit to a two qubit circuit. And usually, a circuit with less number of qubits is better, and I will explain the reasons in the next slide. So here I show a more complicated circuit. Um, in figure eight, we can see the input circuit has five qubits. And then we've, for this circuit, we find a bunch of resizable pairs. And according to some cost function, we can pick the best one to insert. We insert MMR, and the circuit is resized to only three qubits in the end, as shown in figure C. So what's the benefit of this technique? Let's say we want to execute this circuit on this quantum hardware. At the beginning, we need all the five qubits, but in the end, we only need three qubits here. For quantum hardware, the number of reliable qubits is limited, so if we use less number of qubits, we can choose the qubits with higher fidelity, so if we run the circuits on the hardware, the results will be better. 
And also, since the hardware has nearest neighbor connectivity, using less number of qubits can relieve the architecture constraint. But this method also has its dis disadvantages. We can see the circuit depth grows from 2 to 6 in the end. Qubit has a short coherence time, so if the circuit depth grows, it means that qubit needs to stay active for a longer time, which can introduce some error. So we need to trade off between the qubit count and circuit depth. But for some circuits, we cannot find any resizable pairs. Can we still resize this type of circuits? The answer is probably yes, only if we change the structure of the circuit. Here's an example. We have a four qubit circuit. For quantum circuit, each gate is like a matrix and uh, applying multiple qubits like doing matrix multiplication. So the overall performance of the circuit is like a unitary matrix. We can arbitrarily modify the structure of the circuit or the gate type um, or whatever as long as we maintain the same matrix. So keeping this knowledge in mind, we can construct a circuit in this structure, which includes two gates, U alpha 1 and U alpha 2. U alpha 1 is applied to the first three qubits, and U alpha 2 is applied to the last three qubits. In this way, Q0 does not interact with Q3. So we, can, we may be able to reuse Q0 for Q3. And then we can, we can write the matrix of this circuit with parameter alpha 1 and alpha 2. Then we use some optimizer to find the optimal parameters alpha 1 and alpha 2, such that U2 is approximately the same as U1. If we can find such parameters, it means that we can reuse Q0 for Q3. But if we cannot find such parameters, it means that no matter how we change the structure of the circuit, we can never reuse Q0 for Q3. So now let's say we've already found the parameters to make U1 approximately, approximately the same as U2. Here comes another challenge. If we want to run, uh, so for the quantum hardware, it has its native gate sets, which composed of some specific two qubit gates and single qubit gates. If we want to run a circuit on the hardware, the circuits must be composed, uh, must be translated to, to some gates must be translated to a circuit with only this native gate sets. So now, even though we know the matrix U alpha 1 and U alpha 2, we cannot run the circuit on the hardware. So decomposing this matrix to the native gate sets is a process called unitary synthesis. So finally, the circuit is translated to something like this. And then this circuit now is execu executable on the hardware. Let's take a look at some results. For the figure on the left-hand side, the x-axis are some quantum circuits with 5 to 13 qubits, and the y-axis is the qubit count. We can see a very resizing algorithm can dramatically reduce the number of qubits. And for the figure on the right-hand side, the x-axis are some small circuits since we want to execute them on the quantum hardware. And the y-axis are the fidelity of the circuits after execution, and higher is better. We can see how a resizing algorithm can improve the fidelity of the circuit. So to conclude, first, mid-circuit measurement and reset can enable some resource optimization opportunity by the technique circuit resizing. And we can resize the circuit based on its gate dependencies, or we can make it resizable using unitary synthesis. And this method can reduce the, the qubit count and uh, uh, improve the qubit uh, improve the circuit fidelity. And for future works, first we want to incorporate the hardware noise into the resizing process to further improve the circuit fidelity. And we also want to scale the resizing algorithm to some larger quantum circuits. Thanks for listening, and I'm happy to answer questions later. <laughs>